I, I don't really want to break it apart in nuanced ways um, from my interpretation because then that becomes like the definitive answer for what was, you know, happening. Mm -hmm. And I, mm -hmm. like, uh, someone asked me to in interpret one of my poems the other day, and first of all, I had no fucking idea what it was about, but, <laughs> but secondly, um, I don't like to do that with art in general. I think it's kind of, um, I, I like the, I like the, I like the audience to analyze what has been presented by the artist and not have the artist come out and explain. So this is what I meant. This was my intention at this beat. Um, this is what I meant by uh, knowing that I, I couldn't have. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I also, because, yes, also because it's like particularly, I mean, I think if this was like a, a fleeting, insignificant moment on the show, it would be one thing and it probably would weigh in on it. But because this is like, you know, it's a seminal moment, it's, it's my, my character's last scene on the show, uh, I don't want my interpretation of it to be like the definitive word. I want it to be, want it to be everyone's personal journey. And, yes, and I will say one more thing, which is that I, there's certainly no interpretations of that that I'm going to say. It, uh, <laughs> it's like such a minefield. Um, I don't know. I know what I, I know, I know how I approached it and I feel really good about it. And I'll be honest with you. I kind of feel like that came across. Um, so there you go. I gave you, I gave you the best I could. I'm not really terribly well trained as an actor, so I could have probably done a better job, but I gave you the best I could. And I think I tried to convey, I think I tried to convey my intention um, as clearly and, and, and honestly as I could. Yeah. Your beautiful, lovely, throbbing interpretation. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm making light of things. But um, I do feel, on a serious moment, don't worry, I'll get back to dick jokes. Uh, the secrets that you get to build into the work are kind of my favorite part of the whole thing. It's I get to tell you something, I get to tell you my secret with... Um, without judgment and just with acceptance of that moment, which is I always really loved, so. <laughs> are we going this, what are we doing? Yeah, we could go, hi. Hi guys, so a question for both of you. So in the showdown scene, where it's Michael and Lucifer and they're in Adam and Sam, Dean rolls up in Baby to Rock of Ages. If you could have changed that song, what song do you think would have been fitting and you would have chose for that scene? Uh, I don't know what scene we're talking about. <laughs> the ass butt scene? Swan song! Swan song. Yeah. <laughs> do, you have a good, do you have a good song for this? Final Countdown? <laughs> be fired up every time I hear it, you know? I don't know about you guys, but like, I don't think there's a bad moment to hear that song. Like, I could literally be going to a funeral and I'd still be like, da -na -na -na. <laughs> and I would be happy about it. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a song, you two? Sorry, darkness. Um. <laughs> I think it's very fitting uh, for Alice in Chains, Man in a Box. Would Ooh. You gave this some thought. You were not happy with the song choice yeah. in the show, huh? <laughs> You're like, it was perfect, but. <clears throat> I can't do any better than that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Hi there. Uh, I was wondering if you guys have ever had a favorite drinking game. Come on, Alex. <laughs> uh, I don't know that I've ever played a drinking game. Um, honestly. Um, but I, I understand that there's a drinking game related to this terrible, I mean, this incredible movie that I did called uh, Stonehenge Apocalypse. <laughs> and I'd like I, to hear about this drinking game. <laughs> uh, 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 you have to take a shot every time. Uh, uh, I say robot head, I think. Robot head, electromagnetic. Um, yeah. You will be getting treated for alcohol poisoning before the movie is over. <laughs> Can I tell you one thing about that movie? So when we started, the uh, the director said uh, he was. It's going to be a classic. Everyone's going to love this movie forever. Yeah. The the writer said uh, he was also the director. He said like uh, uh, the notes that he gets on scripts for the sci-fi uh, network is always like make it make it dumber, make it dumber. And the rule was that um, he was told people are watching this drunk, and. So after a commercial break, they have to be able to, like, you have to come back to the movie and at any given point not have to know what happened before <laughs> to be able to follow the story. <laughs> and so I just love that that was the direction that they got from the network. Like, these people are, whoever is watching this is clearly inebriated. <laughs> so just dumb it down. I dropped out of college, so it's hard for me to say. Uh, I played some flip cup, some beer pong, you know? Yeah, they are great. I don't know. I don't know what answer you're expecting there. Hello, my, my name is Amy. Um, I, I actually have a theory to run by you, um, Misha. Um, Jack, Alex, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> um, why Castiel is um a little more so truly awkward than the other angels, um, and so like this sixth season was revealed that Castiel's heaven likes to be in an autistic man's heaven so maybe he um watch it was that to watch the odd more people on the spectrum so then like he he thinks and interacts like a person on the spectrum and alex well Jack is a newborn, so that's what I newborn to three. How much? I don't think a three-year-old in the bit and then adult body could really do that. Not socially awkward. Well, I like your theory. Um, I think that. Uh, you know, it's funny uh, with, with the character of Cassiel being socially awkward, to say the least. Um, I, I've told this before, but um, when I got on the show, I, I got the direction from Phil Segrisha, who was our producer. He said, you know, this character has not been amongst humans for thousands of years, and to him, they are strange alien beings, and he's just trying to puzzle out what makes them tick and why they are the way they are. And so I approached, you know, so out of that little note was born like the head tilt and this inquisitive sort of studying of Sam and Dean and trying to figure out how to integrate myself into their world and, 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 and figure out their social graces and whatnot. And because I was the first angel on the show, I was establishing a template for other angels that came after me to follow, which of course, not a single fucking one did. <laughs> and so I was then, like everybody else, all the other angels come along and they're just like normal people. <laughs> and so it kind of left me hanging there a little bit. Like, well, why is this one so 
oh, oh, socially awkward. What's wrong with this angel? What, why, this, why did we get a broken angel? And <clears throat> I have met a lot of kids who are, or parents with their kids, uh, who are autistic in photo ops or autographs who, who will say, you're like, you know, my, my autistic son loves your character or um, your character is his favorite and uh, he really identifies with Castiel. And that kind of makes sense to me. And, um, and I'm, I'm happy to think of Castiel as maybe a little bit on the spectrum because uh, I think he probably is. Thank you. Um, so first of all, Misha, um, you sent a cameo to me. My name is Kylan. You said hello, Dean, at the beginning. Okay. Hello. <laughs> and um, my question is for Alex. <laughs> <laughs> If you could write a different ending for your character, what would you write? Um, first of all, thank you for being here. Uh, it's nice to... No, um, I don't know. I really liked his ending. Um, I think Jack wanted to find his purpose in the world, and I really feel like he found that with the Winchesters. Um, here's the thing. If maybe we'd have gone another season, and... Um, you know, Misha and the boys had agreed to be away from their families for another year. Um, <laughs> I would have, I would have liked to have seen what? <laughs> it's a lot of work. It's, I know. It's just like you're blaming us for everybody's favorite show being canceled. It's kind of throwing us under the bus. It's like, yeah, well, if he, I would have loved to have kept. <laughs> What would I have liked for my character? For, for the actor who plays him to have a job, for starters. <laughs> Clearly. Um, listen, always be with your family, it's good. Um, I would have liked to see Jack go evil for a while. I think that would have been really fun. Especially for like a season to kind of have Jack almost be like how Lucifer was to them. For me to be my mini Mark Pellegrino, I thought would have been really fun. Um, but overall, I, I really liked what Jack's ending was and, and what he did to, to help the family. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Wasn't he also like the most spiritually elevated God character you could ever wish for at the end? Like, you ended up the most powerful being in the universe at the end? Yep. That's kind of good. I mean, if you have to go out, might as well go out that way. Yeah, my go, might as well as like Buddha Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I have a question for each of you. Um, Alex, I think you're fantastic on the show. I wondered if you had any upcoming projects. Would you say you're, he's one of your favorites? Um, yes, the, absolutely. And Misha, for the cooking show or the food show, how is that going, and when are we expecting to see that air? So I retired, so I'm just going to move right over to Misha. I'm also really excited for uh, Misha's cooking show. Uh, I don't know the name of that one either. Um, <laughs> but I know, honestly, I'm really excited about it, because I do love cooking shows, and I do love travel shows. And, and when you mentioned that you're doing this show, I was legitimately excited, because I love travel television, I love food television, and I love what you learn culturally about these places. So. Um, I am en I'm enjoying it. I'm traveling all over the country right now um, and it kind of exploring different communities, different uh, ethnic communities, different um, geographic communities uh, through the lens of food. So it's sort of like it's, it's the entry point in order to penetrate these uh, other worlds that I don't chortle. <laughs> Shame on you. Um, I want to get deep inside these communities, and um, and each episode has a climax. Um, 
<laughs> and hopefully, I mean, I, I'm feeling like at the end, I'm, 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 I'm walking away feeling like uh, very satisfied. And I, I hope the community that I visited was satisfied as well. Um, the, it's been kind of fascinating. Like I was, I just came here from Detroit and I was like, I, I spent an hour with the former head of the American Nazi Party and spent a couple hours with a guy who's an urban farmer in, on the vacant land in, in you know, on lots of, that were demolished after the, uh, finance, the housing crisis in 2007. Um, there's so many vacant properties in Detroit. A lot of them are being turned into urban farms. I was talking to this guy who's 87 years old, who's farming in his like dungarees, this black farmer uh, and his cowboy hat. And uh, he was an Okie, he lived through the Dust Bowl. He had 17 siblings in Oklahoma. And now at 87 years old, he's farming in Detroit. That's pretty cool. So I'm meeting fascinating people and, uh, and having a lot of really greasy food. <laughs> which is why my Castiel pants don't fit anymore. <laughs> and uh, around Thanksgiving, to answer your question. I was gonna say, Thanksgiving, that's great. Hi, my name is Panda, and I'm the one that you came down to the audience to see yesterday, Misha. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, and I would uh, like to redeem myself because I asked the dumbest ass question yesterday. <laughs> um, it's very intimidating to have you right in the face of the microphone, so I apparently just boarded something dumb out, so I want to try it again. Okay. Okay, so you have one of Did the Did you ice your husband out, though, more importantly? Oh, uh, hell yes! Hell yes! That's why he's yes. back there. Good. Um, uh, so you have one of the best entrances that, that I thought on Supernatural, the way you came into that, right? But there, one there, of the best. One of the... Yeah. Yours is obviously good. Yeah, I would say... Love you, too. I would say the best, right? Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. poll that has the best entrance into Supernatural and death came in first oh. you came in second I want to know what right yes <laughs> what do you feel about that well it was clearly rigged yes. uh, clearly, it was clearly Julian, Julian just poll. like clicking clicking yeah. clicking clicking because <laughs> yours was clearly the best no question okay good I'm glad yes. that yeah well I guess god does that mean that maybe we can't trust online polls I certainly hope that's not the takeaway. Right. Wait, we can't trust everything we read online? That can't be right. Huh. Strange. That's it? <laughs> well, well, I don't know. What else do we talk about about that? What more can we say? You help us out. Well, he, You seem no. unsatisfied. Uh, yes. Death came in and he was just walking. Someone bumps into him and he dies. You're blowing out music. lights and shit. I mean, no, I, I think we agree with you. <laughs> We're on the same page. I just don't know what yes. more there is. I know what my entrance was, so you don't have to tell me. And he was there, I yeah. think. The whole time. <laughs> <clears throat> I wasn't. I was in kindergarten, so it's fine. if they didn't kill every time. <laughs> I, I don't even mean them, they're just fine. Were you um, in kindergarten? That scene was, it, it was interesting because, well, it was, once again, so my, my, my last scene on the show was the last scene that I shot, and my first scene on the show was also the first one that I shot. Was that, was that? Fascinating. Was it true for you? <laughs> was the first, was your first, what was your first scene? Why does it he know? <laughs> naked? Yeah, naked. naked. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty good way to join the show. Um, if I was naked and walking and there were sparks flying out behind me, then <laughs> yeah, it would be a chance. little one up and ship. <laughs> yeah, one up and ship. <laughs> well, you should have you should have you should have laid down the law when you got the script. You're like, no, I saw Misha's entrance, and here's what I want to do. I'm going to be covered in oil. I'll be nude, covered in oil. I'm going to slide I want sparks into the set. coming down on my head, but I want to be rock hard. And I, I think 
about Misha on these panels. <laughs> so it was a very daunting scene with the, these, like, I was actually getting burned by the sparks, and I, I, I don't react well to gunshots, so the squibs going off when I had to try to be very stone-faced and calm was, a, was very challenging to me, and I was thinking, what have I gotten myself into? And then we did the first take of dialogue, and Kim Manners, who was the director, came up and he said, can you, can we, can we, can we try that again? And this, maybe try not to be so spooky. <laughs> you know you're doing a great job if the direction is, try not to be so spooky. I have no idea what I was doing, but whatever I did, they didn't like, because we shot the dialogue scene in my first scene, the, the dialogue portion of my scene. And then the next day we came back to set and the director said, hey, let's shoot that dialogue scene yeah. again. <laughs> and uh, again with the spooky. Yeah, try not to be so spooky even more. I don't know Less if you know spooky. this, but Halloween is over, my friend. Uh... <laughs> uh, Jensen said that his reaction after we shot that scene was like, oh, what? What is this guy doing? <laughs> I was just laying the groundwork for the autistic angel. <laughs> you want to move on? Yep. Hi. Hello. Um, my name is Sarah, and my question's for both of you guys. Um, so, because we didn't get to see it on screen, what do you think that Cass and Jack's interactions would be with Sam and Dean in heaven when they first saw him? Uh, well, previously, me and Misha were asked what uh, he thought uh, Cass and Jack would be doing in heaven. Misha's answer was, quote, paperwork. <laughs> so, I hope he has a better answer today. Misha? <laughs> For me, for me personally, I, I would hope it would be like hugs and a round of drinks, you know? And just like a catch-up. Simple, beautiful, Misha Collins, everybody. Well, simple. <laughs> simple, beautiful, Misha Collins. He's a good looking guy, but dumb as a rock. Misha Collins. Uh, I saw on, <clears throat> I was looking at Twitter this morning and looking at comments, which I don't normally do these days, but there was a little kerfuffle. And I, uh, I was looking on Twitter and, um, and I noticed that someone said, Misha doesn't even know what is happening in the story with Cass and Jack in heaven. Like he clearly didn't read the script. Which is true. Why do you do this to yourself? <laughs> <clears throat> I didn't read this, I didn't read, listen, I didn't read the last two scripts, and I'll tell you why. Because you weren't in them. I wasn't in them, and I didn't care. <laughs> no, I wasn't in them, and so I thought, you know, what would be cool for the last two episodes? I would like to just see these last two episodes as the audience sees them, not knowing ahead of time what the story is. And so I watched them, but I don't actually have uh, as firm a grasp on the, the substance of those episodes as I probably should, being one of the, one of the <laughs> most important characters on the show. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> what are we doing in heaven? Reorganizing. We're reorganizing paperwork, exactly. <laughs> uh, um, what are we doing? Reorganizing. Apparently, and, and we're off, and we're out doing stuff, right? And but but we're not with Sam and Dean. Could we visit? Why so they do. That's that's. This was the point that someone was making on Twitter. Like Misha, yeah, you know, they actually say you can visit. Um, they say that. Yeah. Well, I missed that part. 
but I learned from Twitter that that is an option. <laughs> I knew we'd have a simple, beautiful answer. <laughs> I mean, how do we, what do we, so, well, I think that they should, I mean, when we do the reboot, um, I think we should start with that reunion. Um, and I think it will be quite heartfelt. I think, I think there'll be a lot of feelings there. Oh, that was a meaningless thing to say. But, yes. Hi. Is this? Okay, it's working. Hi, Misha. Hi, Alex. Hello. I am from Belarus, and I said this before, but I learned English by watching Supernatural. Wow. Um, and it's That's been so cool. It's been great. By the time you got on the show, I already knew English. So. <laughs> Amazing. I just wanted to ask uh, for a bonding vacation between father and dad, father and dad, God, father and son, <laughs> Jack and Cass. Where would you guys go? What would you do? So, uh, first of all, I would have really liked to have been here for this urban farming thing. That sounds fascinating. Yeah. Um, so I had this idea for like, you know, we always joke on the show that it's like, we're going there and it's pouring rain, it's dark. I'm like, where's our Hawaii episode? So I would have really liked to a pitch one where just like, you know, Sam and Dean are like, there's a case in Hawaii. And then <laughs> we all have to like the hell was bring that? the Impala over somehow. <laughs> we all have to get to Hawaii. I pictured maybe some matching shirts for us. You can still keep the trench coat. <laughs> um, I would have really would have loved like a Hawaii Five O kind of spin-off for us, just to like solve crimes in Hawaii. Uh, and that could double as our vacation. So I, I was really excited about that. You know, we could eat some, some poke bowls, maybe a Mai Tai, just really enjoy ourselves instead of deal with the pouring rain. Thoughts? Yeah, that sounds about nice. Misha? That sounds great to me. Yeah. Um, we really didn't do a lot of vacationing on the show. They took like no vacation ever. Yeah, I guess like the Scooby-Doo thing could count as like a temporary vacation. That was pretty great. <laughs> um, you guys went to like every part of America except for Hawaii, right? Yeah. yeah. Alaska? Did we, did we never go to Alaska? No, you went. Well, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> Let's go with Hawaii. <laughs> Hi. 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 Um, I want to start off by saying, Alex, you are my like absolute favorite. Jack is my absolute favorite. And um, thank you. And we we agree with you. We wanted to see an evil version of Jack. And also, my question my question for you is, um, it was mentioned earlier um, at the kind of public goal panel that I wanted you to answer it for everybody here. Um, what would you think Jack's pronouns are? Oh, no. see, uh, I've been asked a couple times, like, uh, what Jack, like, there's one episode with this girl, Maddie, who he, like, she's flirting with him, and Jack just has absolutely no idea what to do with himself. Um, for me, I, I never categorized Jack, because I was never worried about his sexuality. Um, obviously I just said his sexuality, um, cause, you know, male presenting. Uh, but like, what I ended up liking about Jack is there was really, it wasn't really written that way. So I mean, I feel like in 2021 he'd be like, they, them? Um, yeah, but I mean, when we were, when the show was happening, I mean, that really wasn't uh, dealt with, but what I liked about Jack is that like he was You know none of that really mattered to him at any point and like when that episode kind of happened it, it was fun But like uh, I felt like Jack was so uh, Pure that like it really never really crossed his mind, you know Misha, you are my mom's absolute favorite. Uh, so, I'm, I'm the favorite and you're the mom's favorite. Yeah. Yes! My question, my question for you 
is English has always been my hard subject in school, and specifically writing. And I was wondering, since you just released your poetry book, if you had any tips on how to make writing easier. Um, no. <laughs> I, I do have one, one exercise you could potentially try. <clears throat> There's a book, which is basically a self-help book that I quite loved, called The Artist's Way. And it is a sort of step-by-step -step guide to uh, exploring creativity. And it provides a framework that I think is kind of useful. But one of the things that is prescribed in this book is writing morning pages. So every morning, whether you feel like you have time or not, uh, hell or high water, you have to give a few minutes to just uh, stream of consciousness writing and uh, and without any ob uh, objective in mind not trying to get you know not necessarily trying to write a story or an essay you could be just making a list of the dreams that you had the night before or whatever comes to mind but it's just act actively just writing uh, for the sake of writing and I think it's a useful tool and kind of makes the process of writing a little more accessible in af after you do it for a while so you could try that um, or, I don't know if you know, like if you're having trouble writing things for, for school, um, a lot of times if you just change a couple of words, you can copy and paste stuff from Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> so that's one, one workaround. <laughs> that was a joke. Don't do that. You have to change more than just a couple words. Hi, Misha. Hi, Alex. Uh, Hi. My question also involves a little bit about Mark Shepard's character, Crowley. We lose... Mark! Yeah. We lose Crowley right before Jack is born, and I... Do you guys have any ideas what an interaction between Jack and Crowley might look like? Misha? <laughs> uh, it was a much better fourth character on the show. <laughs> <laughs> the boys. Oh. <laughs> the boys need it, Crowley. They don't need you. I need nougat, so uh, <laughs> if you got any of that laying around. Um, I don't know. I feel like that would have been really fun like power dynamic to play with. Um, between the characters, you know? I do like this, though, getting roasted. I so agree, it's fun. yes. Been really great. I, every wall, all of the white men on our show, except for you, engaged in gravel voice of, uh, uh, off. Like, it just was... Why did, it, it, why did it escalate every season? It escalated season? because uh, of, of the same problem, like the same reason that you wanted to have your entrance be covered in oil. <laughs> that that <laughs> Just one-upmanship. <laughs> one-upmanship. I came on the show and I was like trying to do my weird voice thing, and then Jensen was like, oh no you don't, I have the deepest voice on this show. <laughs> and so by the end of season four, Jensen is like... <laughs> And then Mark Shepard was brought on the show to sort of et to, sh to train us how to do an even deeper voice. <laughs> and along the way, Jared was like, hey, you guys, wait, wait for me. And then he tried to get a deeper voice, too. He never quite caught up. <laughs> and then you, you came on the scene and you're like, you know what? I'm not even going to fucking play this game. <laughs> I did really, I did really enjoy that though, because I'm like, all right, new set, this is cool. Hey, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Three, two, one, rolling. Here we go. And I'm just like, <laughs> like why is everybody That's right, everyone's in? voices while we're on, like, everybody's talking Batman. before, right. It's like, we're kind of squeaky voiced guys, for the most part. And then the cameras roll. <laughs> everybody's trying to find out what happened to Gotham as soon as the cameras roll. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm really excited. I 
absolutely love you guys. I love this show. It's so wonderful. Your relationship, like character-wise, is some of my favorite. Besides, like Sam and Dean and Dean and Kat. Some, some, some of your favorite. Like those. We're right up there. <laughs> Top twenty. Top three. Friendships. <laughs> um, but my question is: Is what you guys think? Um, the angelic true forms of the angels of the archangels look like? Like, do they look more like the, you know, the ones with the harps, or do they look more like the biblical biblical illustrations of like five million? They look eyes? like Teletubbies. <laughs> <laughs> that are as big as the Chrysler Building. They're giant <laughs> Teletubbies. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Misha. Hi, Alex. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at you guys. Um, <laughs> Don't get closer. <laughs> yeah, so my question is, um, we know Jack, obviously a very uh, grown-up toddler here. Suddenly, God, uh, what do you think his first, like, silly um, rule of God is? Like, he hears this song over and over in like a grocery store and he's like, all right, that's it. Or does Cass stop him, act as the voice of reason? Did you say, what's his first silly song or silly no. rule? <laughs> what's his like first silly priority as God that he takes care of? Listen, uh, I would love for God to take care of a lot of things, uh, first and <laughs> foremost. Um, but I feel like Jack resolved to be the hands-off God, right? So I feel like part of the hands-off policy would not involve making rules. But if I could make some rules, you know, you could end poverty, you could end, uh, you know, global warming. He could do a lot of things. Um, but I'm a hands-off guy, so. But okay, basically, I feel like we're just did like Miss America questions. <laughs> World peace. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking more of like him. Like yeah, that's not was not a satisfying answer. To her. <laughs> you did not leave her satisfied at all. <laughs> Typical. I was just imagining like he makes pie like the national dish of a country to please Dean, you know, or something. But a small off the beaten path country. Yeah. <laughs> Again, that already sounds like a dictatorship. You're like everyone eats pie today. Everyone like. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I guess I'm not a fan of rules. How about that? All right, that's fair. Thank you. Unsatisfying, I know. Hi. My name is. Uh, my question is for Misha. Um, Did you just skip over your name? <laughs> yeah. Wait, what happened? Um, my, Wait, my name's uh. So Misha. Um, <laughs> What's your name? Why do you why do you want to remain anonymous? <laughs> Is this going to be a super controversial question? No, uh, my name is very hard to pronounce. So for like other people, so I don't even try anymore. Well, but is it, presumably it's not difficult for you to pronounce. Taylor. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, but say it again. Taylor. 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 Well, I think. I I think. First of all, we don't have to necessarily say it back to you. <laughs> so you can just say it and then, you know, and, but you knew what was gonna happen. Somebody was gonna be like, what? And then you have to say it again. You have to like take your mask down. Holy shit, are we making her worst nightmares come true? Yes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. But, is everybody able to say Taylor? Taylor. Oh. Let's say it 15 times. <laughs> Why? Why do I enjoy being cruel so much? What is that? It's a question I'd like to ask everyone on the set of Supernatural. <laughs> Taylor, tell us, uh, tell us what you wanted to ask us. Someone just said, "Go away, Rob." Uh, thank you. I'll tell Jared that well, that's sweet. Okay. Oh. Um, I want to know. What your approach was to being Nazi cast? What, my sure? what was your approach to being a Nazi? Being a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> Let's end the panel there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I took the usual approach to being a Nazi. Um, 
uh, you know, I they had the they had the uniform for that character, which was very clearly like an SS officer's uniform, which informed my interpretation of the character, which was to do a very shitty German accent. Um, it was quite a strange series of choices, uh, I guess they could be called blunders, that led to that iteration of Cass. I don't know if you ever saw this, but I, I was... You, you were a Nazi. I was a Nazi for a half an episode. I don't think Alex was born yet. No. <laughs> See the old jokes! <laughs> Um, this is the part where you say, thank you, we love you. Thank you, we love you. Everybody!